It's Studio Lajo Cree. I'm Larry Krieg, and this is Hokkaido's Far East, the last video in my series of four Hokkaido railroading videos. In this episode, I'll take you from Sapporo eastward along the mountainous Sekisho Line down the Shintoku Horseshoe Curve and through Obihiro to Kushiro. Then I want to take a few minutes to talk honestly about J.R. Hokkaido's challenges financial, operational, social, and legal. And we'll wrap up with a sunny morning trip from Nemuro along its beautiful isolated peninsula back to Kushiro. Froggy says, let's go. Okay, Froggy, here we go. We'll catch the early morning Super Ozora 2. The Kiha 283 Kansas is just pulling into Sapporo Station, as seen from the JR Hokkaido Tower Hotel above the station. A cleaning crew is waiting to board each car and perform a swift, thorough cleaning. By the way, if you're a fan of Japanese anime, you may have seen Studio Ghibli's feature, When Marnie Was There. The leading character travels from Sapporo along this same route to somewhere near Nemuro, and the trains are very accurately but briefly shown, together with many geographical and cultural features of Hokkaido. Are some scenes eastbound out of Sapporo shot from a different train. We're meeting an inbound Kiha 283, the model used in service to Kushiro. And here, a little farther east, crossing the Camino Pro Viaduct. Just east of Sapporo's new Chitose Airport, the Sekisho Line splits off from the Muroran Line, which heads south along the coast, while we head east into the mountains. The Sekisho Line, opened in 1981, is 3 foot 6 inch cape cage, but built to high standards. Though mainly single track, it has 15 passing sidings along its 132 kilometer, 82 mile length. Previously, passengers to Obihiro, Kushiro, and points east had to go north through Takikawa, curve back south and east through Hurano, which we saw in my third Hokkaido video. It was roundabout, but followed the valleys with only a couple of tunnels along the way, and though there are many more towns on that route, it left the eastern part of the island somewhat isolated by the long journey. The Sekisho Line not only strengthened the connection between the East and Sapporo, the capital, it also helped open up the Hidaka Mountain region for tourism. These mountains have since become a major skiing and wilderness vacation destination. To the east of Shinubari Station, this line runs through the Hidaka Mountains, which are called the backbone of Hokkaido. Long tunnels, such as this one, two and a half miles long, punch through the Hidaka mountain ranges. In this section, there is almost no area where people live except around Shimukaku and Tomamu stations. The train pops out of several tunnels only to fly over a viaduct spanning a deep valley and back into another tunnel on the other side. In this section, there is almost no area where people live except around Shimukapu and Tomamu stations. 
When this line was first planned, several more stations were envisioned, but people have steadily moved out of isolated mountain areas of Japan, preferring the bright lights and jobs in cities. Now, Shimukapu and Tomamu are principally resort villages. By the way, the clips I shot in 2008 are normally unobtainable now. Apparently a grade crossing accident about 2011 resulted in the death of a passenger standing in the front vestibule. So the vestibules on both ends of express trains are now closed off. Local trains still give good views, but there are no locals on the Sekisho line. One interesting feature of the Sekisho line is its eastern junction with the Nemuro line. Known as the Kami Ochiai junction, it's unusual because it's inside a tunnel. Of course that arrangement makes perfect sense for a mountain railroad with heavy winter snow. Emerging from the tunnel on the east, the line descends into the broad Tokachi Valley by means of the Shintoku Horseshoe Curve. Although the horseshoe is very pronounced on the map, it's barely perceptible from the train itself. But notice the extensive snow fences. Thanks to its 6 degree tilt, the Kiha 283 units barely slow for the curve. Uphill, their high power to weight ratio allows the train to maintain practically normal 79 mile per hour track speed. Though the two diesel engines under each car don't make for a particularly quiet run. East of Sapporo, 220 kilometers, 137 miles, is the city of Obihiro. This is the center of the large productive agricultural region known as Tokachi. East from Obihiro, the line stays fairly close to the seacoast until it reaches Kushiro, 80 miles east of Obihiro and 167 miles from Sapporo. Kushiro got its start in the late 19th century as a coal transshipment port serving mines not far inland. Now, Kushiro is a regional center for agriculture, tourism, and various industries, doing their best to attract people to a region that is slowly losing population.
The last leg of the trip to the far eastern tip of Hokkaido is the 135-kilometer, 84-mile stretch of the Nemuro Line, also known as the Hanasaki Line, served by single-car Kiha 54 DMU locals. The city of Nemuro itself is the easternmost city in Japan, with a population of 29,000, wide streets, and seasonal population. It feels a little like a city in the northwest of the U.S. or British Columbia. When I visited in November 2019, most of the hotels and shops were closed, hopefully awaiting the return of vacationers and tourists. Nemuro is also the front line between Japan and the Kuril Islands, claimed by Japan as northern territories, but administered by Russia, only 28 kilometers, 17 miles away. Before enjoying the run from Nemuro to Kushiro, I want to give you a 10,000-foot look at the situation of passenger railroading in Hokkaido. Population density in Hokkaido is far less than anywhere else in Japan. In fact, it's exactly the same as Michigan's, 175 people per square mile. When Japan National Railway was privatized and split up in 1987, everyone knew J.R. Hokkaido would struggle financially. So the Hokkaido Railway Company was set up as a wholly owned subsidiary of the Japan Railway Construction, Transport and Technology Agency, a quasi-governmental corporation along with J.R. Freight and J.R. Shikoku, both of which also face financial challenges. With a diminishing population overall, and especially in rural areas, most analysts see the future of rail service in Hokkaido consisting of cutbacks and service reductions. Several lightly used lines have been closed already, and more are on the chopping block. As of 2019, Hokkaido Railway offered a high level of service, nearly 500 round trips daily, including local and conventional long-distance service. Compare this to Michigan's five daily Amtrak round trips. According to a report in Railway Gazette's September 24, 2020 issue, the balance sheet showed a loss of 21.1 million U.S. dollars on these services in 2019. A high-speed line connecting to the south through the Seikan Tunnel, which we looked at in the first Hokkaido railroading video, unfortunately lost 86 million U.S. dollars. Not surprising since it doesn't yet reach the main population center of the island. This combination of financial and population loss may have contributed to low employee morale and may be behind some of the operational difficulties that have been reported. The most unfortunate incident was the derailment and fire of a Kiha 283 train set from Kushiro en route to Sapporo the evening of May 27, 2011. There were no fatalities, but 39 people were hospitalized for smoke inhalation or injuries. It took place in a tunnel in the Hidaka Mountains just east of the small resort town of Shimukapu. Japan's Transportation Safety Authority determined that the cause was a flat wheel, which had not been reported when the train was inspected two days before. The vibration caused by the flat loosened the bolts, fastening the drive shaft connecting one of the two diesel motors under the third car to the hydraulic transmission in the car's rear truck. Shortly before the train entered the tunnel, the drive shaft fell from the transmission and started bouncing between the roadbed and the underside of the car. While striking the car, the end of the drive shaft knocked away some support structures which fell onto the rail and knocked the wheels of the car's rear truck off to bump along the ties. The drive shaft continued to bounce wildly and soon succeeded in puncturing the rear fuel tank. Diesel fuel sprayed out covering a number of hot surfaces, including the exhaust manifold and the engine itself, producing thick white smoke, but owing to characteristics of diesel oil, did not ignite. By this time, status indicators in the control cab had indicated a serious problem, and the driver engineer had brought the train to a halt. 
After the derailment, about 10.54 p.m., smoke began to fill the cars in the tunnel, but the passengers were not evacuated for almost three hours because the emergency procedures manual required crew to identify the location of the flames before releasing people into a tunnel from a burning train. For a long time there was choking smoke but no flames, and the crew followed the instructions to the letter, though several people availed themselves of the emergency exits without authorization. Someone apparently called the police who came to the mountains from Hurano. The police ordered the train evacuated shortly before the diesel fuel actually caught fire, rapidly spreading through the train and completely gutting it. Here the train remained until it was towed away the following day, a total loss. Its cab now forms the centerpiece of a somber safety-conscious display in the JR Hokkaido Training Center at Naebo in Sapporo. The accident kicked off a number of events, including multiple system-wide investigations. It was revealed that there was a pattern of falsification of inspection records and failure to report serious issues, both with rolling stock and track maintenance. A few months after the derailment, the CEO of JR Hokkaido committed suicide, leaving a note urging railroad personnel to greater care for safety. The parent organization in Tokyo, JRTT, replaced the upper management and gradually updated maintenance procedures and equipment, but disturbing incidents continued to take place for the next several years. In 2013, a young person was found on a moving express train with arms caught in the door. On another express train, a minor fire broke out. A freight train derailed due to out-of-gauge track, which had been noticed by an inspection crew, but reports falsified to cover up the need for track work. In 2015, an express to Honshu caught fire in the 37-mile-long Seikan Tunnel. At that time, the longest and deepest operating rail tunnel in the world, forcing evacuation through the system of escape tunnels, and for the only time on record, escaping passengers had to use the cable car system to reach the surface. In 2016, an airport service train ran 200 meters past a station stop, and it was revealed that such incidents were not uncommon but seldom reported. The good news is that beginning with the Japanese fiscal year 2018, safety-related budget was increased 22%, nearly 300 million U.S. dollars. But even before the pandemic of 2020, studies were underway to close more routes and stations. Yet, even during the pandemic, JR Hokkaido was still running more than 500 scheduled services a day, including along the beautiful, sparsely inhabited Nemuro Peninsula. So let's close with scenes from the 8.24 a.m. single car service from Nemuro to Kushiro.
hope you've enjoyed this series of Hokkaido railroading videos. Look for more in similar series of Larry Krieg rail videos. Thanks for watching.